Hi YouTube and happy Monday. Today I'll demonstrate the M5 Stack Oscilloscope app amongst the other apps on the M5 Stack that I've highlighted in another pair of videos when I was using the Oscilloscope app to help decode the serial printer output of my TI-66. Before I show the Oscilloscope app, I'll show a few other apps on this M5 stack sitting on the famous red background here, not red carpet as I said, but red blanket that you've seen in the programming calculator videos and some of the radio videos that I've done. Anyway, so I have the multi-app firmware installed. You use these two buttons to adjust it. There's applications, system, about, and then sleep. Let's take a look at about. Very simple information there. System CPU info, 240 megahertz, two cores, and voila, I don't have this connected to uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth right now. Four megabytes flash, huh, 173,000 bytes free and no micro SD card. Return, okay, what else? Wi-Fi connection, display backlight, return um, application. So there's the oscilloscope that I'll try in a little bit. A web radio, you could stream internet radio on this. Weather information, use this as a server. I'm not quite sure how that would work. I think that's network access storage of a micro SD card. Browse an SD card, tools, yeah, Wi-Fi packet monitor. Wi-Fi scanner, IS2 or I2C, not IS2C, scanner, DHT temp and humidity, and stopwatch. I also have a um, heart rate monitor I might plug into this so I can do coherence, measure heartbeat coherence during uh, meditation or other exercise. Games, Tetris, Flappy Bird, Alien Shooter, I'm sure you know there could be more that you could install on this. Anyway, so go ahead to the oscilloscope, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so let's turn on applications, oscilloscope. This is super cool. So what we're looking at here is the sample square wave output from the built-in signal generator. That's really simple and not very adjustable. That's done by this jumper cable here. Let me point that out. So it's attached to pin 36, which is channel 2 and pin 26, which is the output. I didn't have any, you know, resistor for adjusting current or um, what have you. Okay. I could also plug this, uh, unplug this, and then you see nothing, and then plug it into channel one, which looks like that. It's just stuck there. So that's channel two. Let me zoom in a little further so you can see what uh, these options are. So that's run. If I press uh, menu, you can go down. You can adjust the voltage divisions. One volt all the way down to 0 0.150, 50 millivolts. Yeah, 50 millivolts is the lowest division. And that's channel one and channel two for the other. Okay, let me go down, press menu again. This tiny but very nice screen. Can't make any bigger. Yeah, and that's how it looks when you're really small. Okay, two milliseconds, five milliseconds, 10 milliseconds. Uh, 50, yes, yeah, so you can see how fast it is. Adjust the time divisions and get more spikes in there. One, two, five, ten. And that's the highest we'll go. I'll go back down to a more reasonable division. Yeah, so I guess this is, what would it be? Um, a bit over one kilohertz. I think the lowest time division you can get is 0.3 milliseconds so I'd expect you could get a maximum of three kilohertz signals measured with this 
Um, let's see. There's normal and inverted for each channel. Uh, normal, uh, inverted, okay. Offsets, I think. Uh, yeah, channel one or channel two. Um, let's take a look. I'll, I'll take a look at the computer for what some of these other options are. But this is a key one. See gen that I'm looking at? That's the signal generator. I can do triangle, various triangular waveforms. I can turn it off. Or I can do a sine wave. Look at that. Okay. So while you take a look at that, I'm going to go ahead and read off on the computer the other options. Once I go back in the oscilloscope. Okay. So I'm on the computer over here. In the oscilloscope, there's the different options. Let me pull this up again. Okay, our, um, you can stop and run it, adjust the sensitivity, as I said, sample rate, channel modes, normal, inverted, or off. The offset for each channel, a trigger from channel one or channel two. The uh, trigger mode, auto, normal, scan, one frame, trigger level. Trigger edge, either rising or falling, and then the um, internal signal generator mode. So let's take a look at that again. Okay, menu. Okay, so that normal, yeah, normal or inverted. Uh, we have offsets. Uh, let's see, I guess this is trigger, I think that's trigger mode. It's a little hard to see. Or no, no, that's that's for each channel. Okay, yeah, offsets. Then the trigger uh, channel. Um, let's see what that is. Yeah, trigger switch from channel one or channel two. Okay. Let's see if that affects me switching. Oh yeah, so that was the issue. That was why when I had switched to, um, hmm, yeah, to channel. Yeah, I guess that's channel two actually. Must be flipped somehow. Anyway. Or no. Okay, so the top is channel two, the purple trace is channel two, and the yellow trace is channel one. Okay, I'll go down, auto, normal, scan, one frame. That is the trigger mode. Um, okay, trigger level, down, up, down. So I guess on what part of the waveform the oscilloscope's triggered and then the signal generator. Now let's go back to uh, sine waves. Look at that. Anyway, so I hope this was useful to you and you enjoyed that demo of the M5 stack multi-app and oscilloscope. I'm hoping to edit the firmware so that I can save traces from the oscilloscope. This should be really useful in my TI-66 project. I hope that's informative. If you have any thoughts, questions, um, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, please like and subscribe and have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much for watching.